Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. <laughs> we, we had the opportunity of being at your agape feast last night, which was well, well received. Um, your first elder, is it Ron? came over and introduced himself to Enos and myself, and we felt at home. And then um, Ken and his wonderful family stayed way past my bedtime last night <laughs> to make sure that everything worked well. Um, I tried to tell Alicia that I came to support my friend Enos, who, by the way, is just a tremendous Christian person. You know, he's very humble, but I've been a witness to his generosity. He sponsors people from Haiti. He brings them into his home. He feeds them. He clothes them. He goes out with them on a job interview, and he interviews for them. And then once that person is landed on, the, on their feet and that person moves on, he brings another one. We do not believe in salvation by works, but we believe that the more we know is the more we owe. I try to tell Alicia that I have been battling a sinus infection for the last two weeks, and I have this lingering cough, and so I am not the person to speak today. I don't even think she heard me. <laughs> I really don't, so I'm going to cough a little, and I hope that you can excuse me <coughs> as I work my way through that, and Roy made a little brew of uh, ginger and garlic and whatever else, <laughs> turmeric that I'm sort of sipping on. Um, I, you folk are just so welcoming. A little secret for you, one of the reasons why I came, I want to see if you are taking care of Roy and Leisha. Because if you weren't, we are going to take them back with us. <laughs> but after last night, we're having second thoughts. You know, we, we want to come here. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to talk, Leisha said, for just about 10 minutes or so about the foolishness of the cross. <clears throat> you heard me correctly. The foolishness of the cross. And before I do that, before you play the video, how about if we start with those symbols? Um, on the screen, you will see in a moment some symbols. And I was joking with, uh, with Ken last night. I said, you know, I showed him one of their, their symbols. And he didn't know what that symbol was. I said, why don't you ask your kid? Yeah, that's the symbol. I said, what is that symbol? He's like, I'm not sure. Do you guys know what that, what that symbol represents? TikTok. Do you know what is the net worth of TikTok? Anyone wants, wants to guess? You can engage with me. What do you think is the net worth of TikTok? How much did you say? 54 million? Five, a billion? 66 billion. And they use that symbol to represent 66 billion. That's their spokesperson, their symbol. How about this next symbol? We all know that Nike. What do you think is the net worth of Nike? Yes, anyone? 800. It's actually 143 billion. And that's the logo of Nike. So whenever we see that logo, we think about Nike. How about this one? We know that one. And that represents their company. That's the face of the company. The net worth of uh, Facebook, 
815 billion. And then here's the final logo. What do you think is the net worth of that symbol? Millions? Billions? I heard someone say gazillions. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. And it comes straight from the Bible. Please do not yell at me. Don't scream at me. I'm going straight to the Bible. And I want the children to be engaged. I notice a lot of children here. Maybe there should be a prize for the child who gets it right. I want you to count how many times I say the word foolishness. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 25. Here we go. The message of the cross is foolishness. That's the first one. To those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is a power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has God, has not God made foolish? There, there we go again. The wisdom of the world. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased, here we go again, through the foolishness. They're talking about the cross. I ask you, what is the net worth of the cross? And so far, according to the Apostle Paul, the association, three times, is foolishness. Jews demand signs. Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles. Four times. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. The, the talk is entitled, The Foolishness of the Cross. I know. That was my expression when I read these verses. The foolishness of the cross. I don't like being called foolish. There's some names that I will tolerate, but one of the names I don't want you to call me is foolish. As humans, I need to define what I mean by foolish. <coughs> there are some foolish things that people do, right? Like you're speeding on the road, 100 miles an hour, that is foolish and reckless. In fact, a funny story. Um, do you want me guys to tell you what happened last night with myself and Roy and Leisha? Thanks for asking, I'll tell you. <laughs> Talking about foolishness, right? Just a little foolishness. So, I guess Leisha is well known for making guava bread. And Leisha took her time I am going to throw you under the bus, Leisha. I'm sorry, I got to do this. She took her time and she baked five amazingly delicious loaves of guava bread. And her intent was to bring the loaves of bread to the church for the agape feast last night. And so, okay, we left home. We are driving. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I heard someone in the back seat yelled, The bread! I'm like, what's going on? She's like, I forgot the bread. So we drove back, got the bread. Roy was supposed to speak last night. Now we're really late. Now we're speeding. Now we're driving recklessly. That was a little foolish. 
Let me ask you a question. Would you invite a thief, a murderer, into your home to sleep in your house and leave your wallet and your car keys on the kitchen counter? Would you do that? No, that will be foolish. I'm trying to break this down for you. That will be foolish. I want to talk about the foolishness of the cross. It's used five times. In fact, when the Apostle Paul used the word foolish, the Greek word that he used is morose, from where we get our English word moron. So when you read the text, what Paul is saying, you have to be a moron to believe in the cross. The foolishness of the cross. Brief word of prayer. My Father and my God, as we contemplate the message of the cross, we pray that your Holy Spirit will tabernacle amongst us. And we will open our hearts and allow your spirit to move and woo us all over again so that we may look at this cross in a totally different light. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. To, to really appreciate what I'm talking about, we need to go back to the Romans. The Romans were not the ones who invented the cross, but they were the ones who perfected it. The cross was used with a specific purpose in mind. It was to impose maximum punishment. It was the most heinous way of teaching someone a lesson. Think about this for a minute. Let's talk about the physical toll of the cross. This is why Paul referred to the cross as the foolishness of the cross. It weighed about 168 pounds, strong enough to hold a human. And if you've ever been to Israel like I have, the heat is intense. And so if someone was crucified on the cross, when their hands were stretched out, and nailed on the cross. The heat was so intense, for that person to breathe, they had to physically lift themselves up and try to inhale like, hmm. And then they had to lower themselves to exhale. <gasps> and every time they did that, excruciating pain shot through their body. That was the physical toll of the cross, but that was the easy part. I'm talking about the foolishness of the cross. There was a psychological aspect. I don't know if you know this, but when they crucified people on the cross, they crucified them naked. When the artist drew Jesus on the cross to protect his dignity, he put a loincloth around Jesus. But he was crucified naked. They did that to humiliate the offender. Everyone was afraid of the cross. And then there was the social shame. What that meant is that if I were crucified on the cross, every person in my generation was known as the child of Colin King who was crucified on the cross. No one went to the cross willingly. That's why when Paul wrote in Corinthians, he referred to the cross as the foolishness of the cross. In fact, in Galatians 
3.13, here's what it says. Curse is everyone who hung on a cross. Let me ask you the question. Do you think it was foolish or reckless for Jesus to go on the cross knowing what you just heard from me? Do you think that was foolish or reckless? You're not sure? Let us go a little deeper. When God looked at Jesus on the cross, it was so gruesome that God hid his face, which is why Jesus cried out, My God! My God! Why hast thou forsaken me? The devil knew. Once he got Jesus on the cross, it was over. That's why they referred to the cross as a foolish thing. This logo lived in the minds of the people. Do you think it was foolish of Jesus to go to the cross? You're not sure? You're thinking about it? Let me go a little deeper. Scientist and Ellen White, and I believe that there are other worlds, unfallen worlds. And when Jesus went to the cross, what he did, he placed the entire universe at risk. Take that in for a minute. Was this foolish? Okay, let me go a little deeper. Jesus said, if there were only one sinner, he was still going to go to the cross. I tell you what, maybe I'll go to the cross if I, had it, if I needed to, but I would go only for people who like me. But if you didn't like me, why would I go to the cross for you? Well, that's what Jesus did. And here's the really cool thing, because I am not here simply to talk about the foolishness of the cross. I am here also to talk about the power of the cross. Here's the good news. Jesus took this symbol, <coughs> this symbol that represented shame and disgrace, and watch this. He turned it over, and he turned this into his victory symbol so that now, today, when we look at the cross, we no longer see the shame and disgrace and the foolishness. We see the power of, of, of God. This is now our symbol of hope. I ask you the question, what is the price of the cross? Someone said, priceless. You know why? Look at the power of the cross. It has the ability to take really messed up people and turn them into really nice people. Moses was a thief and a runaway and a killer. But because of the power of the cross... This same foolishness that Jesus took and transformed into the symbol of salvation. Moses the murderer wrote the five books, the five first books of Genesis. That is now the power of the cross. Rahab, a prostitute, but because of the power of the cross, she became an ancestor of Jesus. Matthew, I'm getting really excited. Leisha, I'm going to go past 10 minutes. Matthew, <coughs> crooked thief, tax collector, when he encountered Jesus, and because of the power of the cross, Matthew became a gospel writer. Peter, foul-mouthed, cursing fisherman, 
because of the power of the cross, he became a powerful preacher for God. And to go a little deeper, if you look around, a number of us here, had it not been for the power of the cross, we would not be here today. I know we were all cute and cerebral, and we were all in our bow ties and our nice dresses and so on and so forth, but it's because of the power of the cross that we are here today. Because of the cross, we have Good Friday. Because of the cross, we have the beautiful Sabbath day. Because of the cross, we have Resurrection Sunday. Because of the cross, we have grace. Because of the cross, we, we can look forward to the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day because of the cross. Was it for crimes that I have done? He crawled up the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for my crown. In closing, little boy heard a preacher preaching about the cross and the little kid had just started school and he was learning about subtraction, multiplication, division, and addition. And when he came to the addition, he looked at it and he said, that's the cross, the addition is the cross. And he was absolutely right. I see the cross as an addition. It adds people from all races, from all walks of life. It adds grace, it adds peace, it adds joy to our life. I will be forever grateful for the cross. May God bless you.